Well, good. Well, welcome everybody to September 14th uh, implementer, IPFS implementers working group. Um, yeah, where we have different IPFS folks that are involved in IPFS implementations and those deeply affected by it to come together and you know, connect, align, share updates, et cetera. And this is a lot of where uh, specs updates it's, it also get discussed as well. Uh, and so with that, we will we will jump in. Uh, yeah, per usual, just start to start with anyone who wants to give any updates on IPFS implementations. So on Kubo, there's a 023 release coming uh, this next week. We expect to do the RC on Monday. We just had a conversation about that. And then with, you know, assuming no major issues found to then do the release itself by the end of the, by the end of the week. I don't know, Adina or Lytle, anything in particular you want to call out for this audience that's coming? Not that there has to, I know we have linked to the release notes. Yeah, I think I could, for people who want to uh, self-host, uh, there will be experimental opt-in uh, configuration option to expose existing routing system uh, for content, IPNS, and peers under the, the same port that we have HTTP gateway. So just like you have slash IPFS, slash IPNS, there, there will be like a slash routing V1, and that would be a way for you to sh shut down the HT client on one Kubo node and kind of like delegate it to a dedicated root routing cluster. Um, that's to facilitate experimentation, I guess. Uh, yeah, and I guess a couple other ones are uh, de deprecating some old things. So so Mplex and uh, Quick uh, Draft or 29, um, which are uh, sort of Mplex is no longer being supported by default. It'll get dropped entirely later. Uh, and uh, the old quick draft uh, is not being supported anymore. Uh, it's not being supported in, in Go to P2P or Quick Go. And so we're, we're dropping it uh, as well as part of updating. Um, but enough of the network has upgraded, updated to Quick V1 that should be fine. And if they don't, they still have Trust V TCP. So shouldn't be any problems there. Yeah, and I guess to that end, that I, we should get that into the release notes because that's not, is that out? That's, I don't know. If, I guess we can follow up offline. We should get that into the change log. Yeah. And then I guess the, there is a PR coming regarding experimental support for HTTP, HTTP over P2P, P2P, which does make a change log update. So that's something that'll yeah. show up here too. I'll show up. Yep. Cool. Yeah, very, very good. And on the Helia front, um, there's this issue just focused on how do we, Ensuring we've got reliable retrieval uh, happening in a browser with from Helia to be able to talk to, for example, any modern Kubo node that's providing content doesn't have to be Kubo, but just using that as a example to be able to show end to end. Uh, and so there's quite a few work streams related to this. Some of a lot of which happen in the JS side, but there are backend things needed too. But that's where a lot of the Helia development is going right now, and we're linking the specific subtasks from this kind of master tracker. But um, you know, that's kind of that's the real quick summary of what's happening in Helia world, and happy to talk more on that in the IP JS fill Slack channel or in the corresponding issues. Do do any other um, yeah. IPFS implementations want to share anything that's been happening in their side of the world? Yeah, not required, but Alan or Brendan, if there's things you want to share, love to hear it, but your, your call. And it looks like Lytle's got one he's typing into. Yeah, I, I thought that it's worth mentioning that we've started phase two of IPFS Chrome project um, and still figuring out the prioritization and ordering, but uh, TLDR, it's a, a, a set of patches on top of Chromium open source project to add the native IPFS and IPNS protocol handlers, uh, but with a twist in that there's no uh, lib P2P, at least right now, and it purely uses trustless gateway specification and just HTTP. And what we want to explore in this phase is somehow related to the thing that you just mentioned for Helia, uh, that the, the phase one, it was, you provided this client a set of gateways and it will fetch blocks from them. It was a proof of concept to demonstrate it's a good enough for a single person to browse websites. Uh, the phase two is to make it more robust and 
close the feature uh, parity with existing gateways or something like Kubo in IPFS desktop. Uh, so if the none of gateways has the CID you want, now that with the things that the routing v1 that will be shipping the next Kubo, or um, uh, you will be able to learn about uh, providers that speak HTTP. Um, and then IPFS Chromium, will, what we want to do in this phase, at least explore the possibility, is to leverage HTTP providers and figure out, flesh out specification details and write them down so people can leverage that as well. So just like Helia would be able to leverage delegated routing to learn about peers and fetch uh, over HTTP, a block or a card, the same, effectively the same specs, the same like client behavior would be in IPFS Chromium. So we we reuse the spec work and uh, prototypes. So we'll see. Probably both yeah. projects will learn from each other. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks. That'll good update. Anyone have anything else they want to share in terms of implementation updates? I can jump in. Cool. I did not. I not, did not get on the agenda. I'm sorry. I'm late, everybody. You're good. Um, yeah, we're cruising along on IRO. Uh, we have a 060 release that we have cut two alpha releases for. Um, and the bigger one will be coming out in uh, at the end of September, you know, the proper 060 release. Uh, this includes the our new document synchronization stuff and our mobile stuff. I think notable stuff for this community that would be fun to talk about. Um, we have a PR that will land sometime today or tomorrow uh, in time for the release that includes network change detection. And so I've actually been having the delight of wandering around with our app uh, across different various ways of connecting to the internet and having our document sync stay across all of that, which has been a, a massive uh, lift to be able to actually have your physical internet protocol uh, address change and still maintain a peer-to-peer -peer connection to your existing peers. Uh, and so that PR, if you want to check it, I'll link it in the notes. Um, but uh, all in all, things are really cooking along on that side, and we're very excited about some of those bits to come out. We've also landed a bunch of new stuff around downloading prioritization and uh, bandwidth uh, prioritization and constraints. And so if you want to see any of that, there's also, you have a nice mechanism for queuing and setting up such that only five downloads are happening simultaneously, but that we are constantly supplying candidate peers meaningfully to the background of that queue. Uh, including retries and backoffs and a couple of uh, techniques for improving the odds of choosing the right peer to try and fetch from. Um, if anyone wants any more details about those, happy to get into it, but I I can link that in the notes and maybe take the discussion async. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, Brendan. That's awesome. Yeah, good stuff. Anyone have anything else they want to put a spotlight on? Okie doke. Uh, I guess we'll switch over to IPIP IP corner. Lado, you want to take uh, this one? Yeah, this will be like a short one. Uh, there are two IPs which got ratified and merged. One is about uh, interop uh, between path and subdomain gateway. TLDR is that all the extra logic should happen after the redirect to subdomain gateway, because then you have a origin per root CID. Uh, the second one is the paying off technical depth and uh, legacy of uh, IPNS record format. Um, and IP428 uh, got merged and it has updated uh, sections about how to create IPNS record and how to validate it. Um, it. I guess like the gist is that it enables people who don't need uh, backwards compatibility with super, super old nodes that speak IPNS to create very lean records that no longer like duplicate the same values in CBOR and protobuf. And uh, it shipped in Kubo 22. Uh, Kubo still produces V1 plus V2. Uh, the same, we have a pull request in JS IPNS for Helia and it, the library will still produce V1 plus V2 by default, uh, but the, v2 only is an opt-in that now uh, is possible and if people need those lean records they can create and use them uh, there is one uh, ip ready for file reviews it's been uh, in the ratification queue for a while it's a work by enrique on adding uh, peer routing endpoint to the routing v1 
uh, for delegated uh, routing system, which closes the gap. Now, with this one, we will have teacher parity. We can look up content, IPNS, and peer records. And effectively, with Kubo 23, be implementing this IPIP, you can delegate all the routing to a different node and shut down local like DHT clients if you want. Um, but probably we'll get merged on Friday because it was not very controversial and we've been working on that for a while, but I mentioned it because it's still open. Uh, and there are ongoing discussions uh, more on the board, but the things I listed here um, are probably more the mo most like topical or recently uh, updated. We continue discussing the metadata on the trustless gateways. When you request a car and you want to like attach some metadata to the response, um, it's a need from Project Spark, I believe. Uh, I think we found a way that will not create too many waves in the ecosystem while we are waiting for car v3. Uh, the second one is codifying how do we expose trustless gateway over lp 2 p socket instead of like TCP socket. And the last one is how do we signal which features gateway has. There may be a gateway which supports specific hash functions or uh, only supports blocks and not cars. And it would be nice for clients to be able to quickly probe it without uh, making like uh, tests with various requests. Uh, for success and failure. Um, I guess that's the speedrun update on the IPIPs. I think uh, there's nothing requiring immediate attention, but if you are interested in any ongoing discussions, uh, the time to provide feedback is now, I think. Great. Th thanks, Lytle. Does anyone have any questions on any of these or want to yeah, ask any follow-ups? Cool. Real quick, Lytle, on is, I guess all of these are, okay, go, go ahead, Alan, please go ahead. Uh, uh, <laughs> when you said, do, if, can we discuss them, do you mean on the on the issue or like, is, is like now free time for doing that or like what's, what's the deal? It's, here? it's preferably on the issue, so people who are not on the call. <laughs> I uh, can can participate, but uh, we can we can also like if you had like a very quick question, we I'm happy to answer. No, I just I'd just like to see on the opt-in extensible car metadata stuff. Like it would be rad if we didn't have to do stuff like that. It's kind of weird. Um, I I think realistically there are a number of asks that result in needing like a car V3. And this is like, there is an extensibility point that we have now, which is that you can use the, um, you can use the accept headers and you can define that I would like the data as, you know, format equals car plus a Dean's wacky and, you know, wacky inflatable format. Uh, and I can put whatever I want in there. And then I guess people will understand it as long as it's, you know, looks like a valid car data. Um, and this is like, if you'd like to do that for now, here is a way that you can do that. Um, but I think realistically, we're going to need a car V3 thing to support things like you have reached the end of your file, or there is an error in sending you the data. Here is the error type. I don't want to traverse anymore because I don't want to give you this block because I legally have been told to not give you the block. So that's the end of this for me. Don't ask me for it again. Or uh, I want to hold, I want to have a large block that since I want to have a large Blake three block inside my car file. Those like the, the current format just has like a number of failures there that seem like they're not that hard to fix together. Um, but I think this group didn't want to wait on that. And so this is them saying, here's, here's how we're going to do it until that lands in a way that nobody else should have to support in the short or long term. And then hopefully it fades away. That's my take. Yeah, it's also like uh, in 
I think the version that we are approaching on that IPIP is it's a, it's a sensible trade-off in that it's effectively the manifest becomes a JSON at the end of the, after a car stream. Um, make, making it uh, explicit opt-in by a client creates like a control environment. So the most important part is to not impact existing clients. And by the fact that this is like explicit opt-in by a HTTP content negotiation, we don't risk uh, creating in incompatibility in the ecosystem, at least not for the default state. Uh, yeah, so waiting for Carve 3 so far it, is the best. There was ever. like, I think there was some talk on like, I mean, so, you know, it kind of sounds fine when you're sort of dynamically generating the car as in the trustless gateway. Um, but I think, I, I don't know if it was here or if I saw somewhere else that like, if you're, you if you receive a car with this data in it, then it needs to be stripped out somehow. Um, yeah, so that's why, uh, yeah, that's like, if you so the problem the... with this whole scheme, right? Like the reason we need a car V3 is because the data plane and like the control plane are getting mixed up, right? What's happening is you want to give me some metadata about the car and you are shoving it in as a regular looking block at the end, right? Um, yeah, I think you are and, eloquent, and then... eloquently challenging saying what I'm sort of trying to get at, I think. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and 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 I and I stole that particular framing of the complaint from from Juan when he saw a similar proposal like seven months ago. Uh, so this is, I this is why I think this is like this is very unfortunate, and I think also why we, it is good motivation for us to do something that is better and allows you know separating those concerns out. Um, and if you view if you if you view some amount of the specs thing is like, I am doing this. I am telling you that I'm doing it this way so that you know how to interoperate with me. Then, I think this does that job. But I, as something that I think, like, lots of gateways should support and stuff, or that anybody should remember a year from now. I'm hoping the answer is no. Yeah, there's also like a, a thing, maybe like what Alan is trying to uh, ask is it comes from like how they use cars. Uh, when someone like sends you a car with a stream with this thing at the end, how they should behave. Uh, and they also have a concept of car CIDs, which is a hash of the car stream. So I think the 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 version of the, this IP after a suggestion from Rod to use this like zero length variant at the end before the JSON makes the uh, makes it easier for Alan, like for you Alan because you can I then you can simply like just discard anything after that and you only care the, the original car is explicit. When, when is when is Alan worried about getting this opt-in JSON block? Someone I, you know I curl I curl some endpoint I curl up some endpoint I get a car then I go over to my I, I like I round tripped some data right I, I took a car file I put it into dot storage then it got shipped out as the car file then I fetched it and then like somebody else went and put it back in and it's not even the same thing anymore because it's got this random signature blob at the end. But why would it have that? Like the URLs to curl won't won't do that, right? Because of like that's the whole opt-in thing. Like it's not a standard oh, yeah. curl. It needs to have like the header and the set of things to yeah, say yeah. that you actually want Still. the JSON appended. Still, someone can like open web browser console on a page that is doing the opt-in and they can right click and choose copy curl and they can fetch it that way. <laughs> you know, we, we don't really control uh, edge cases like that. I think it's better to but be- But they can also take the, they could take the JPEG and recompress it themselves and get a different car that doesn't quite hash the same thing. Like that, that people can do malicious and silly things. Uh, I think is we're 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 considering pretty edge cases at this point. Yeah, but you know, if it's a car, if if we say it's still a car, but it just has a manifest at the end, we are like, you know, back to the what's the lesser evil? Do we create a totally new content type, and we risk like splintering ecosystem on something that we 
hope it's temporarily until car v3 arrives uh or doing the the other thing i think it's less like i i elaborated on the ip that i think this is like a lesser evil uh and i think like for for alan uh gives a very clear signal where the car ends there's no ambiguity is the last block manifest or not and i think that's probably better uh, in the long run yeah Uh, on the so I guess find a bit more time. Just real want to check. Did anyone have anything else they wanted to add to the agenda or bring up? Uh, just so we use the appropriate time correctly. Not seeing anything else. Please please feel free to add. I guess uh, I, I, I this has been the sorry IP IP four thirty one has been framed as a as a stopgap that you know keeps the damage kind of contained until Car V three comes around. Uh, I guess, what are the natural systemic driving forces that are going to make CAR V3 actually happen? How do we expect that rock to get in motion? We don't know. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm hoping that one of the one of the three driving forces I mentioned earlier will will start propelling people. So if you need the if you want the the large Blake three blocks in the car file we need a new format for the car file so that would be one group that might push if you need oh, you know oh this is on me well oh, I mean it's God. not you're, you're <laughs> not the it's, it's it's groups together right yeah. so that's one okay. that's one push if you're like hmm I've noticed that I keep trying to serve car files in my car responses but I also have a block list and sometimes nodes in the middle of this block list show up and I have no way to signal the error and that causes the systems that this moves through to freak out. Maybe, maybe, maybe the people who need errors want this, right? If you have HTTP caching stuff in the middle and you'd like to know if your stream terminated for like a good reason or a bad reason, <laughs> it seems like a third group that would that would maybe push on this. Yeah. Um, if if none of those groups care enough <laughs> to do this, then I guess we're we are okay dealing with the status quo, right? But. I'm hoping at least one, if not multiple, are involved and care to fix that. Okay. And I, I guess your hypothesis is one of those probably will care enough to start leading this effort. But then once that momentum gets started, other priorities will probably pile on because now is the time to get multiple needs met. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, what is currently on fire that is driving? I, I didn't, I think I've missed the glaze over of the thing that's animating the. Why is the stop gap? Uh, IP four thirty one, yeah. Little well, you wanna okay. uh it's for uh being able to know that when I like there the, the the spark, which is retrieval measurements, wants to be able to say I got this IPFS content from this provider. And so they need a way for boost providers to be able to sign their responses. So they would like to attach a signature in some form at the end, so that clients to boost uh, or to Filecoin storage providers get that and can potentially submit that as a measurement sort of token to show that they did in fact get it from the expected SP, not from someone else. Um, and that needs to be part of the response. So there's, now, there's no metadata channel for this whatsoever. Like, like a header. So well, it's an HTTP car response. So like, but can it come with an HTTP it, header? Why isn't it a instead? response header? Like, Well, that's at the... Okay, so so it has to calculate a checksum of its response and sign that before it sends the response, and then the client nice. hangs up and doesn't take the data of the response. Sounds not good. So it could be a trailer, but I hear we don't like trailers. <laughs> I mean, trailer. Yeah, they don't work in browsers. <laughs> Shit. Can blame the Google people who didn't want to make the other Google people working on gRPC happy. Alan, you had your hand raised earlier. I don't know if did you did you was there anything you wanted to say or are you good? no? Uh, it, it was largely answered by um, okay. uh, Brendan's uh, question. Um, okay. But yeah, it sounds like I'm 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 unlikely to have to implement it. So okay with that. Yeah, and like, isn't this just like inherently a conflation of the data plane and the like? This feels like not a car file. Like, why can't we just say that the response is not a car file? Is there a thing that contains a car file? 
I I would re re delegate to a, a wall of text on the IPIP. I think TLDR okay. is that uh, we had a prior art when we said, oh, this is just a temporary measure until the next week. And five years later, we still have things like preload nodes and the list of examples like that is around. So it's just like be playing it safe and smarter this way. It just in case we are stuck with this, we don't end up saying, hey, if you want to support IPFS, you need to implement this. This, those like free content types. Instead, this is like a opt-in detail of existing content type. Mm. Uh, I agree, it's not the best, but consider yeah, it. Yeah, is, yeah. yeah but yeah. like to me, the, the root of this problem, like just if we're talking about we're waiting for car V3, the design constraints that this conversation puts on a an archive format that has to deal with error responses all of a sudden feels like a pretty large design space that like uh is that what we're doing like you know that's that that seems like an inherent conflation of the so so it might be and the, and the at rest format doesn't it like can so we it not might add? be that it might be that what comes as a result of that is that we say okay this is actually two different pieces we need a storage format and we need a streaming format and the streaming format has these things and the storage format has those. And I understand that everybody has been hoping that the streaming, for like there've been a bunch of tools that are trying to treat the streaming format and the storage format as the same, but I'm sorry, that's not always gonna work out that way. Um, and I think that's reasonable. I think one of the proposals around the streaming errors thing was like, I think one was like, you may consider wanting a thing that's just a car, a separate car stream format. And I think that's like, I think that could naturally come out of that. I suspect it won't look super different from what the archive format looks like, except that maybe you say like this type of metadata, no good here. And this type of metadata, good here. This is unavoidable, right? Like we can't, like whether we, we this it's a semantic argument on the basis of the requirement that you be able to sign responses and include that on a, on a based on the context of the request, right? You You've invented a wire protocol format specific like if we call that a car it doesn't matter what we call it right like that is this is the thing that's that's networking centric right um and so like i i think i'd i'd behoove us to think about the v3 design space as two separate things and not call it a streaming or wire oriented archive that's a confusing thing <laughs> and so like let's do a wire protocol cool we can totally do a wire protocol and then let's do an archive format and if, if, as long as we keep those kids separate, I think we'll, yes, some people will maybe not have a great time because cars over the wire have gotten thus far, but like this, this is the sound of boards creaking under pressure um, in, in my humble opinion. Although I think there, they, I think, I think the relationship between them can probably can't bifurcate that much because you're, you're, you may end up with questions like, okay, I'm doing. I'm I'm doing like a, you know, I want some like, you know, some index or I have my my large block, which has its like tree structure. Do I want to do I want to like chunk all the all the the index parts or the tree structure parts together, which I could do if I was like just making one big archive and I didn't need to, and I could write to disk in various offsets, but I couldn't do if I was streaming it over the wire. Right. And be like, well, you could do that, but maybe we want to keep these things closer together so that it's fairly easy to turn the streaming format into the storage format. Like you're just stripping out a few bytes. Yeah, it's it's a convenience for sure. You know? um, but it, it seems like, if I understand correctly, a lot of these new requirements really, aside from us and our weirdo big blocks, are really uh, oriented around the wire problems. Is that fair? Like, Alan, you guys seem like you're having, you're doing a lot of cool stuff on the like wire. Like HTTP. If HTTP yeah. was better, right, then then some of these would probably go away. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand like what we should be focusing on, right? Like, do we need a new at rest storage format, or do we need to solve some of these issues on how we add metadata to responses um, and deal with the burdens of checksumming and signing, um, which are hard requirements of a lot of our systems. Thank you.
Yeah, so I don't know. If, yeah, other comments here certainly welcome. I think just for maybe to help my understanding, like the important point about, hey, should we just maybe accept some of the reality that there's an at rest and a, a streaming format here? And like, if you take that mindset, uh, like if we, we think about that, what what causes people that are hitting some of the wire issues today not to just go start creating the um, you know the car streaming spec like is it just such a is it too big of a lift and too many changes in the tooling to get something like that supported rather than kind of the shoehorning in that we're proposing right now yeah it, it, it's a good question in my and it's like my intuition i guess of how those things work is it's kind of like at this point we hit like a network effect everything supports cars so we try to figure out how to make things with cars um it's a we got a hammer it's a nail but at the same time by pig, by reusing cars you reduce complexity around uh user support testing for example we have gateway conformance tests that can make sure that the the basic production use of car format for reading directories, files, uh, works. If you invent a new format, you need to now have exactly the same test cases against this new format. You need to have test vectors for that. And now people need to implement those two formats instead of one. IPFS Chromium right now uses uh, blocks. It may be fetching uh, cars. Uh, it does not matter for this project, but for example, for other projects, um, in IPFS desktop, you have an option to fetch an archive. In some web panel of a service that provides IPFS support, you may also have a button that says, fetch this DAG as a car, or, and that's the car that you can import to your node. So that's the use case. I exported the file and I got it back. Um, during that export over the network, are you doing streaming of the, the stream protocol? Should the stream content type be used if the user want the archive, right? It gets fuzzy. And I think like maybe the way we should be thinking about it is when you hear like car v3, that's like a placeholder for answering the question. Do we need two things? One? And if so, in which use cases we would be using them? At the end of the day, I feel we'll be still hitting the situation when you have the streaming, like the format tailored to streaming, but the user wants an archive. <laughs> and error detection of that archive, figuring out, oh, something went wrong because that archive got fetched through multiple HTTP hops. There's never a client server. There's client, a bunch of middleware, and there's the server. And the HTTP semantics are the, the common denominator. So I think like, yeah, that's my mindset. Uh, for me, Car V3, uh, when we have time, it may be one thing, it may be two things, but uh, just just being cognizant that there's there are the edge cases when, when you'll be always mixing the two. I mean, I think the, the in the specific case of why is this uh, going the way it is, the part of the requirement from Spark in order to make their thing useful is that the boost servers, the SPs, so Spark is the is the measurement uh, subsystem that wants this authentication from storage providers in order to know are they actually serving the content they're supposed to as part of a reputation feedback loop. And in order to do these tests and figure that out in a way where the clients can subsequently, you know, tell some third party, yes, I got it from this provider or no, I didn't and get and have a signature that they can pass on. So there's this, um, you know, attestation that becomes possible over these requests from SPs that are, you know, under a protocol that, that provides that. 
they really like that to be a thing that all clients end up asking for and getting. Because you also want those measurement things to be undifferentiated requests from your actual real user traffic. Because if only the measurement boxes say, and give me a signature, then it's pretty easy for the SP to just only give a signature to those measurement clients, but not serve the real traffic that costs all the bandwidth. And so if we're, if we're also building a thing that actually causes the impact of these measurement clients that is the SP should be serving the content when they're asked for it, um, it needs to be a thing where that's also close enough to a standard that at least things like Lassie and other clients that are going to these SPs are also able to ask for and understand and get rid of that signature because that signature needs to become sort of a default thing that happens on all requests to these SPs if that's going to be a meaningful attestation that can get used. So that, that's why it went into that standard process and, and trying to figure out how do we make this part of what that protocol is for at least this subset of providers. Okay, well, interest, yeah, this is definitely an interesting conversation. I know a lot of thought has gone into this. A lot of things have been written in this IPIP. Uh, I guess, Brendan, did you get your answer about what Spark is? I did. From, okay, cool. Yeah, I just want to make sure I was kind of, yeah, what Will was saying. Very good. Um, does anyone have anything else they want to bring up before we close things out here? It's the status on this IPIP. Moving forward on it. Sorry, status of what, Brendan? This IPIP with the extensible. Do we feel like we've come oh. to some degree of consensus on it? Or I guess we don't need to, but like ideally we could advance that while text oral here. Alan, are you into this? Are you does anybody want to hold this back? It doesn't bother it's it doesn't I'm not, bother me. No, no, I'm not gonna stand in its way, like uh partly because like I said, I'm not sure that I'm gonna need to implement it. So but like I, I don't I, I think I think you don't need to implement it. And I think you can ignore it. Uh, is right. <laughs> the intention here? And I think it, that means so we did the extensibility okay, right? If we've managed to put it in a scenario where someone's been able to add in a thing that they can use that people yeah. who don't need, don't have to support. The call out to IPFP four twenty five, which I think would be very helpful, also in furthering this kind of thing. So for, yeah, and so for moving 431 forward, uh, I, I guess, I, I don't know if there's already implementations in place that are following this, what's been outlined here, Will, but I guess that's uh, having that in, in Lassie and in Spark code will be, I guess, what we would want to see. Uh, I believe I believe we have Frisbee as a server implementation that uh, supports it. And uh, I think Spark client supports it. Uh, I don't know about Lassie fully yet, but I think we're working on that. Okay. Cool. So maybe this, I, I guess at least in this call, you're maybe the strongest representative for driving this one forward to get ratified once there's also the corresponding implementations behind it. Okay. That sounds right. I think we're continuing on those implementations and we'll come back once we've got them working and demonstrable. Great. Well, thank thanks everyone for for your time. Yeah, I I know I didn't take uh, great great notes here. I will we'll get the transcripts and stuff pasted in. I was just trying to focus on being able to listen. Um, so thanks for that. We'll post the recording here shortly as well. Um, hope everyone has a good uh, rest of the day, and we'll talk more next time. Ciao for now. Thanks everybody. Good to see you. Yep. Likewise. Bye bye.